Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about triangle congruence for side, 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 and side, angle, side. Let's take a look. So first of all, this triangle congruence, side, 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 really just means that we're able to prove that two triangles can be congruent when all of the sides of one triangle are congruent to all of the sides of the second triangle which actually means we don't even have to worry about any of the angle measures to prove the congruence. We simply just need, need all three sides of one triangle to correspond with congruent sides of another triangle, and that's it. So then if I have triangle ABC, I am able to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EFD. Now, order is incredibly important, and we learned that in a previous lesson. For example, notice angle A is in between the sides marked 1 and 2. Well, so is E, right? So E is the angle that's marked between sides 1 and 2. So if I start with A, I need to make sure it corresponds with E. Notice that angle B is in between the sides marked 2 and 3, and that's where F is. F is the angle marked between sides 2 and 3. So we need to make sure we have that proper order, and then everything is going to be great. So let's take a look at some proofs. All right, so as I'm going through these two proofs with you, I'm going to be marking some things up, especially about what we're given. Um, you're going to see here in this first proof, we are given that segment AB is congruent to segment XY, XZ rather, BC is congruent to ZY, it's all marked up for us, and then AC is congruent to XY. And when you look at these two triangles and you're like, hey, all the sides are simply marked up with each other, side, side, side is the congruence theorem that lets us say that these two triangles are congruent. There is nothing missing, okay, to find those sides. Let's take a look at the next one. So this next one says segment EF is congruent to segment GF. Okay, H is the midpoint of segment EG. So right now I think it's really, really clear that in this diagram when we're trying to prove that these two separate triangles are congruent to each other, we only have one pair of sides marked up. That's clearly not enough, we need all three pairs. So um, we've got the fact that it says H is the midpoint of EG. We're going to be able to use that. And what we should also notice is that these triangles are attached to each other. And because they're attached to each other, this side FH is part of the left tri triangle, and this side FH is also part of the right triangle. So look what I can say. I could say segment FH is congruent to segment FH, and that's our reflexive property. All right. So now I've got two pairs of sides matched up, and I'm going to use the fact that H is a midpoint. So because H is a midpoint, I am able to say that segment EH, and I'm going to mark it up on my diagram, segment EH is congruent to segment GH. And you can say this for two different reasons. One of them is either you know definition of a midpoint, or you could say midpoint theorem. Either one is fine. So now after using that reflexive property, after using definition of a midpoint, I've got all three sides of one triangle matched up with all three sides of my other triangle. So by my side, side, side angle congruence theorem, I am able to say that they are congruent. I'm sorry, I'm having a little glitchy error there. Okay, let's take a look at these next two proofs. Same general idea, guys. So let's see, I've got two separate triangles here, and obviously I want to prove that they're congruent. I've got one pair of sides of my triangles matched up. Good. I've got another pair of sides matched up. I'm just looking for that third side. This should feel very familiar to the previous proof that we did. Notice that JL is part of both triangles, and it's just simply congruent to itself. So I would say that segment JL is congruent to segment JL, and that we should know is the reflexive property. And therefore, I've got all three pairs of sides matched up. It's my side, side, side angle congruence theorem. Okay, here I have QR is congruent to QT, and QS bisects segment RT. Okay, so I have a segment that's being bisected. So right now I only have one pair of sides that is marked congruent. Something we know we can say is that QS is congruent to QS. And, you know, we've seen this now um, a few times when two triangles are basically attached. The side that they have in common is part of both triangles. 
And we know that that is because of the reflexive property. So now we have two pairs of sides matched up. Now the fact that QS bisects RT means it cuts RT into two congruent segments. So then I would be able to say that segment RS is congruent to segment TS. And it's not definition of a midpoint in this one, it's the definition of a segment bisector. So if a segment gets bisected, um, it's just a segment bisector. If it was an angle that got bisected, it would be definition of an angle bisector. And now all three sides of one triangle correspond with all three sides of the other triangle. And by my side, side, side angle congruence theorem, I can say that the two triangles are congruent. So now the other congruence theorem that's part of this lesson is side angle side. And it says two triangles can be proven congruent when two sides and the included angle. Now, this is going to be a big deal, you guys. The included angle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle. So I want you to look at these diagrams. We can see that there's two sets of sides that are marked up congruent. So you can see the one marking, the one marking, two markings, two markings. Included angle, this phrase here, included angle, means it's the angle that's literally in between the two angles that are marked up, okay? So notice if I'm marking up this side and this side, it's the angle in between. If I'm marking up this side and this side, it's the angle in between. Um, what I'm going to draw for you in blue, what I'm going to draw for you in blue here would definitely not be an included angle because it's not directly in between the two sides that I'm talking about being congruent, okay? Also, this angle here, F, that is not an included angle. It is not in between. And again, that's a really, really big deal for us to make sure we're talking about the exact included angle. Then we can use this uh, congruence theorem. And what this is saying is as long as you have two pairs of congruent sides and the angle in between are congruent to each other, that's all you need. You don't need any information about the third side. You don't need any information about the other angles. You just need this. And if you have this, it's enough to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So A clearly matches up with E. Um, B matches up with F, because notice I'm going along the segment of uh, that's marked up with two. And then D would be the last part. OK, so now let's take a look at some proofs using side angle side. So here it says C is the midpoint of AD, segment AD, and C is the midpoint of segment BE. So it looks like this point C is the midpoint of both diagonal segments. So let's see what we can say. Well, because of the fact that it is a midpoint, that's going to let us say that segment BC is congruent to segment EC. So there's one pair of uh, congruent sides. And then AC is congruent to DC. So because of C being the midpoint, we're able to make this statement, and that can either be called the midpoint theorem or definition of midpoint. Either one is fine. Now, notice none of this information is going to help us with segment AB and segment DE, but that's not actually what we want. Notice this looks like a bow tie, and that should remind you of a special angle theorem that we've learned before. We should be able to see that this angle here, angle BCA, is congruent to angle ECD. And hopefully, as I'm showing you this, you're thinking of exactly the reason why. You know, what kind of angles are those? What's the reason? Why can I say that those two angles are definitely congruent to each other? And it is most certainly the vertical angles theorem. And now look, this is it. I don't need the third side. I don't need the other two angles. I have a side, angle, side. And I have another one side, angle, side. So I've got two sides and the included angle, the angle that's in between those two sides, actually the angle that's created by those two sides. And that's enough to prove that these two triangles are congruent by the SAS congruence theorem. All right, let's take, another, take a look at another one. So first we are told here that segment GH is congruent to segment FG, J rather, and that this line here is parallel to this line here, and of course that's just given. So we've got one pair of sides marked congruent, um, but that's it. We're really not given anything else. Now parallel lines should strike such a chord, and we should also see that, hey, we're trying to prove that these two triangles are congruent, and do you notice they share a common side? So 
I can say, of course, you know, GJ, it's hard for me to say that, GJ is congruent to GJ. And at this point, we've now seen this so many times, especially in this lesson alone, that that is going to be because of the reflexive property. So I've got two pairs of sides marked up. But now I'm going to use the fact that I've got parallel lines. And look, if these two horizontals are parallel lines, and then GJ is a transversal, remember that, then that's going to tell us something else. That's going to be able to tell us, hey, this angle here is actually congruent to this angle here. I'm going to give you a moment. Do you remember what that's called when you have two parallel lines and then a transversal, and then this angle here is congruent to this angle here? Do you remember what those that special angle pair is called? I hope you do. Those are alternate interior angles. So we get to use the alternate interior angles theorem to say, hey, I know that if I've got parallel lines and a transversal, then these are my alternate interiors. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they are congruent to each other as long as those lines are parallel. So now look what we have. We have a side, an angle, and a side. We have another side, angle, and side. And by the side, angle, side congruence uh, theorem for triangles, we can say that those two triangles are congruent to each other. Okay, I've got two more like this. All right, so let's take a look. We've got K, segment KN is congruent to segment LN. All right, so one pair of sides marked up. We're also told that segment KL is perpendicular to segment MN. All right, so we got one pair of sides marked up. Now, here's the deal. When you are told that there's perpendiculars, Okay, when you are told that there's two se uh, segments that are perpendicular to each other, we have to remember that then we're able to say that right angles are formed. So then we're able to say that angle KNM and angle LNM are right angles. And that's just simply because perpendicular lines form right angles. And that's something that we saw a couple chapters back, we just haven't used it in a while. So then after I can say that they are both right angles, I can say that those two angles are then congruent to each other because we know that all right angles are congruent to, all right angles are congruent to each other, okay? So because I'm able to say that, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this up now, that this angle is definitely congruent to this angle. So I've got one pair of sides, I've got these two congruent angles, and then I think you know where we're going next here. Segment NM is congruent to segment NM, that's my reflexive property. And then hopefully we're seeing, hey, I've got a side, an angle, and now this side that both triangles share. And so by side, angle, side, congruence theorem, I'm able to say that the two triangles are congruent. Okay, guys, last one. So this one says that segment QS bisects angle RQT. So this entire angle of RQT is bisected. I'm also told that segment QR is congruent to segment QT. Okay, so... Because I'm told that segment QS bisects angle RQT, that is going to then let me say that RQS, this angle here, is congruent to TQS. Now in a previous proof today, we had talked about definition of a segment bisector. So this goes hand in hand. It's just sim simply the definition of an angle bisector. All right, so now I've got one pair of sides marked up, one pair of angles marked up. Notice again, there are two triangles that share a common side. It's like this just keeps popping up all the time. Segment QS is congruent to segment QS. And then take a look. Side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Um, I am able to say that these two triangles are congruent to each other. That's it. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.